start at Headingley was delayed by rain and bad light, but when play was possible, the Australians, having won the toss, put the West Indians in. And there's seven for no wicket as we join Richie Benno in the second over. Gordon Greenwich taking strike. And a wicket, first ball after the resumption. The ball just chipped around on the onside. Graham Wood is the catcher. And Rodney Hogg has taken the first wicket for Australia. So the catch taken there by Graham Wood just behind the square leg. Mark that down as a real gamble, bowling a bouncer to Viv Richards on a slow Stand. pitch. Oh, well bowled. And that's the one they wanted. Vivian Richards was starting off to hit it away on the offside. It came back a little in the air, I suspect, and kept on going after it hit the seam. Very good delivery from Jeff Lawson. Very important wicket for Australia. Nipping back off the seam there. An optimistic shot there by Vivian Richards. Trying to force off the back foot. And what a delivery it was. And with those arms of Lawson flying up in the air. Beautiful ball. And a big breakthrough for the Australians. Perennial man, Rodney Marsh. 91 tests. Australian record, of course. Oh, bowl. That's the end of him playing over the top of it. Oh, it's a no ball. Don't get too excited in the commentary box. <laughs> bowl, and uh, that's out. Victim for Marsh. That looked a super delivery. He had to play it. Lift. Then tickle down to the wicketkeeper, three down for 32. West Indies put into bat in a heap of trouble here at Headingley. And that's uh, Haynes gone for 13. Let's have another look at that. Delivery angling in first and then very definitely holding up. A very faint edge through to Marsh. Lawson to Lloyd. Oh, he's gone for a big one. Six runs for the West Indies skipper. Nicely played. Just behind square. And Wood can't stop that one. Four for Gomes, 13 not out he is. 55 for three. Another no ball. It's runs anyway, four of them. That's out. Uh, West Indies have suffered a grievous blow there. I'm sure that that was one of the loudest appeals I've ever seen. Fire at uh, the bowler's end. David Evans had no hesitation in raising his finger. Lloyd seemed to be looking for the single. Yeah, that is um, a blow for West Indies. They're four down now for 78. Gets that one away on the leg side, just behind square. And it's four runs off a sweetly timed shot. That was moving on to 25. Full toss, given the full treatment, that's gone a fair way. Very loose delivery there from Yellow, giving uh, what he deserved. Bacchus just giving it a no whack. 47 not out, Bacchus has played the best 
of all the West Indian players quite comfortably. Good strokes, good defence. And he's caught him, and a brilliant catch it was too. That was going at a tremendous rate. 156 for five. Well, we were saying that the weaker bowlers might prove to be anything but, and they have, because that was just a nice, gentle little wide ball. Hit it right in the middle of the bat, but hit the field a couple of wessels almost before he could move, and he clung on. Again, Gomes goes to 50 and we'll get another one. That's a bad throw from out there, Graham Wood, the man at uh, deep mid wicket. Uh, bouncing throw to Rodney Marsh and 50 to Larry Gomes, who so often has saved West Indies batting in recent years with the type of display he's shown here today. Gomes taking his chance there. Whilst it's good tactics for Hughes to have the uh, border on. Might have to have some protection for him in the outfield. Yes, there's no doubt about that. There's uh, a lot of vacant ground down there, and uh, Larry Gomes spotted that and went for it. Went for it pretty well, too. That's beautifully placed. Square drive it probably went just a fraction finer than Gomes originally intended, but it was a lovely stroke. Just angled the bat away behind point. Yes, it certainly was, and uh, he's very good at that. Uh, Larry Gomes, just at the last moment there, opening the face of the bat and placing it square of the wicket. And he's given him. Geoffrey Dujon has gone. LBW to Jeff Lawson, a thoroughly deserved wicket, his third in the innings. He's bowled really well again this morning, with plenty of pace and movement off the seam. And uh, that one beat Dujon. I suspect pitching around about uh, off stump. And umpire constant was the man making the decision. Well, this is exactly what the doctor ordered for Australia. Kim Hughes keeping Lawson on, and have a look at that ball, nipping back there quite a long way. And uh, as I said before, Dujon has been inclined to play from the crease, trapped in front, and umpire constant. No hesitation there, raising his finger. So a big breakthrough this for the Australians. And Some good rolling Robert. here today by Jeff Lawson, the one that cut back and trapped him LBW. Uh, very casual of Roberts there. It looked to me as if he ran his bat in, simply plonked it down, and I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't very close. Andy Roberts looking for the single there and uh, calling Gomes, coming down the track. And uh, that wasn't a bad bit of fielding there, a little flick. The ball hitting the stumps, and uh, if I'm uh, not seeing things, that was out. And it's going to be Rodney Hogg who affected uh, what uh, we thought might have been a run out to take up the attack and he's bowling to Roberts. That's well, done fine, very fine indeed for four. So two needed for the 200. Nicely pushed away, it'll be two runs here. up for six in the 53rd over. A little water out there in front of the pavilion. And he's four set away on the offside. will run through for four. Short. Asking for trouble and Gomes uh, seeing it pretty well now. Just uh, lying back and uh, giving it the full treatment. 75. Two men out in the off, three on the leg. 
Long leg, deep square, long horn. Well, he hits it a long way when he middles it. I remember Andy Roberts uh, making, uh, causing a bit of mayhem at Edgbaston uh, in his early test match days. Incidentally, the other day when the West Indies lost to India, if it wasn't for a stand of 71 between uh, Andy and uh, Joel Gardner, let's have a look at this one again. Now, they didn't mean in even worse trouble. How's that? It's out, caught down the leg side. Marsh, yet another catch behind the wicket. Off Lily, his first of the innings. Roberts gone for five, and that's seven down for 208, with uh, six overs remaining. Just what the doctor ordered there for Australia. Dennis Lee uh, getting the glove, I think, perhaps down the leg side there. And that one nicely taken by Rodney Marsh. Pretty straightforward catch by his standards. But Roberts as Peter West pointed out, can be a pretty dangerous customer and it's always pretty good to see him disappearing back into the pavilion, which is what he's doing at the moment. The West Indies 208 now for seven. Gomes is still out there on 76 and uh, Andy Roberts out court marsh, bold Lily. And it's Dennis Lilly coming up to bowl the 56th over of the innings. Confidence out and another one, top edge, no problem at all for Rodney Marsh and Lily is having a very uh, profitable morning. Eight down, 200 at 11. And Gomes is innings over at last. A, a very effective one for his side. Out for 78. Yes, well, Dennis Lily has done it again. I must say, Larry Gomes, from the minute Dennis Lily got the ball in his hand, uh, looked a different player. Came in and pitched the ball short, and Larry Gomes himself in a terrible tangle. Getting a little edge on that occasion and uh, getting cheered off the ground as well. Three overs to go. Top scorer, Larry Gomes. Bank of the effort. Now it's Dennis Liddy, bowling to Michael Holding. Shot off the back foot, just gets the one. Yes, Dennis Lilly has pitched short to these um, tail end batsmen. Can be very, very dangerous if people are really swinging the bat, but West Indies have never quite got into that position, so it's tactically effective. He's pulling the ball down, getting some lift, and actually giving them quite a difficult time. That's in the air. But it's perfectly safe, and it's four runs behind square on the leg side. And that was certainly too short. Lashes that out to deep cover. And Yallop. Daniel moving into double figures. 225 for eight. And the... Now he's trying to give himself some room. Look at the left leg going out to the left, and he's managed to square cut it. That's a fine shot. That really is a good shot. Four runs. So it's uh, Rodney Hogg's last over. Michael Holding. It's in the air. And it's Wood underneath it and a nicely judged catch at third man. But it was a no ball. And they're still running. David Constant having signalled a no ball. Yet another one. My goodness. Trying to work it on the leg side. And the ball's flown high to third man. Wood having a struggle to find it initially. Well, we've got an intriguing situation here. I wouldn't like to call a winner of this match at this stage. Weston is 235 for eight. 
Uh, things in Australia's favour, there's quite a lot of sunshine and the ball doesn't move as much at Headingley when you have sunshine. Also the outfield is getting progressively quicker. It's quite hard to keep the run rate down at Headingley because the ball does run away to the boundaries. At the same time there is still life in this pitch. Slicing that behind square on the offside. Clay coming round, they've taken two, and Wayne Daniel coming back for a third. No run. Well, it looks as if the West Indies are going to get 240. Australians had them 211 for eight. Nobody hit that hard. And that's a good stop. Very good with the fielding there. From the play out there to deep extra cover underneath the pavilion. Tying himself in knots there. <laughs> Marsh enjoying the joke. We're having a little conference now. difficult for Rodney Marsh from that position. I get a run for that. Goes down as a bye. Could well have been a wide actually if the batsman had stayed where he was. But he's rushed outside the leg stump and they've gone for a bye and they get it. Not the full treatment. My goodness me, he gave it a real hearty crack. Four runs square. Some say it's the most elegant shot I've seen, but it's a 250 up. This is a very frustrating partnership for Australia. When it got to uh, 211 for eight, it looked as if they might snuff out the uh, remaining West Indies wickets here this morning. And uh, these runs might be critical. 250 for eight. Last ball of the innings. And they'll have a single for it, and that's a no ball yet, another no ball. <laughs> They're running a second. Well, might have to get that, has it? And David Constant has said it is out, but it doesn't matter because it's the last ball of the innings. It's nine down. They had to go for a second run. So off the full complement of 60 overs, the West Indies put into bat here at Headingley have lasted the course. They are 252 for nine. And Dennis Lilly's final figures, 12 overs, two for 56. It's quite expensive there, Dennis Lilly. Uh, seemed to rather lose control late on. You've really got to pitch the ball up and control where the ball's going to be hit. First run and a risky one it was with uh, vessels calling wood through and wood struggled a little bit at first finally made his ground no volume and I suspect that's uh, pitched round about the spot where 
couple of vessels has so much trouble around about middle and leg might even have helped it on with uh, the inside edge or off the pad vessels is out for 11 18 for one australia needing 253 to win well poor captain really never in any position to play that he seems to be standing a long way away to leg showing the bowler an awful lot of stumps Very nasty blow. Very nasty blow indeed. Looked to me as though uh, he started off to play it and then decided to duck. Well, holding still generating this terrific pace, even off the shorter run. And it's uh, cracked him right in the side of the face there. It's most unfortunate. Just wearing a sort of semi helmet just with the little side pieces covering the ear and the temple but not the rest of the face and uh, I should think there might well be some, some damage there and running on to the field they're bringing out um, a stretcher Joel Garner has uh, brought that out Uh, it looks to me as though uh, there's going to be concussion there. And uh, the umpire taking a message off there to the Australian camp and into the secretary's office. <laughs> and that is an uh, absolute tragedy. The minor part of the tragedy is that um, it takes uh, one of Australia's batsmen out. The major part is that. Uh, fine young cricketer has been injured. And here's Michael Holding. Well, not much doubt that uh, Michael Holding has become much more effective since he cut down his run. He's more on balance, a lesson for aspiring young fast bowlers. It's what you make of your run-up, not how far you run that matters. He's now accelerating and nicely on balance when he gets to the wicket and his, his beautiful action is getting the absolute maximum out of this pitch. And uh, for David Hooks he has Lloyd and Richards at Slip Greenwich at Gully. And that's safe. Not exactly where David uh, Hooks meant it to go. Wayne Daniel is the fielder. Hooks is off the mark with two. Certainly, he's got a touch. Uh, Graham Wood has got a touch of concussion, but we hope he'll be none the worse after a long rest. So, Winston Davis, a newcomer to the West Indies attack. Hot foot from the Glamorgan camp in the English County Championship. Nicely pushed away by David Hawkes. Well, this is a man who's, uh, if he stays in any le length of time at all, of course, is sure to entertain the crowd here. A very willing stroke maker. The powerful one as well. I suppose if you're bowling at him, Tony, you might feel that uh, he's always likely to give you a bit of a chance. Yes, that's certainly the case with David Hooks. Uh, two slips in there for the outside edge, but uh, also likely to take you to pieces. And there's an example of what I mean by taking the ball to pieces a beautiful shot that by hooks that ball short outside off stump and smashed away to the boundary these australians are going to have their resolve test out tested out there by the pace of these west indians we've already had one nasty little incident a few quick rising deliveries as well big challenge for them here and if they can come through this one uh, they certainly will be very pleased with themselves that was a tremendous shot by hooks and now we've got another another man in the attack, Wayne Daniel. Bowling to the Australian skipper. 
Short, hooked away. Six runs. Well, that's not the brightest of starts for Wayne Daniel, but a very encouraging one for, uh, for Kim Hughes. He really fastened onto that very quickly indeed. That was a magnificent hook shot there by Kim Hughes. Daniel bowling a short delivery. Hughes in a beautiful position there, going back and across and dispatching that down uh, onto the lower balcony of the players' dressing room. Beautiful shot. And again, again in good position. That could be another six. It is indeed. It's got there. My word, what a start. This is a really challenging bit of cricket by the uh, Australian captain. Another outstanding bit of timing here by Hughes. This is very ordinary bowling by Wayne Daniel. And that dispatched uh, just to the left of the players' dressing rooms down there for another six. So 12 runs coming from two balls and the... West Indian attack after a magnificent start by Paulding and Roberts. They're not looking quite as nasty now. And I suppose if the Australians are going to make any impression, it's going to be upon the lesser pace of Daniel and Davis. Well, it's a nasty rude shot for Wayne Daniel joining the attack here. 18 runs off his first over. We've just heard a report on uh, Graham Wood from the Leeds Infirmary. He has severe concussion and, is, and he is staying there, or seems likely to be staying there overnight as a precautionary measure. And that's out, caught by Clyde Boyd. A victim for Winston Davis, two down for 55, out goes Kim Hughes for 18. Clive Lloyd, he doesn't miss too much. That was a good catch by Clive Lloyd. Not a bad delivery, but just a little bit of extra bounce there for Davis, outside off stump, a forcing shot played by Hughes, and that is the big deflection here. The ball going away very quickly. Lloyd has got huge hands getting them in exactly the right place. It's a big blow for Australia. Their captain caught off the bowling of Davis at first slip. That's beautifully picked up. Four runs uh, wide of uh, deep fine leg. That's a beautiful shot. Way down to the boundary. The end of the over. The score 60 for two. Wayne Daniel, fine shot again from David Hooks, nicely timed, punch through the offside, four more runs, moves on to 21, 64 for two. Daniel having a few problems out there, at the moment he's either up or back, and that means that uh, the Australian batsmen are going to have to either hook or drive, and obviously what uh, these chaps try to do, these quick bowlers, is hit the middle somewhere, just short of a length. And Daniel failing at the moment to get that length right. Comfortable single for Hooks. Through the gap between the bowler and Medan. He was in prolific form last season in Australia, nearly 1,300 runs and a new Sheffield Shield record. He's down to 3.8 and over now, leaving 253 altogether. West Indies card, 252 for nine off their allotted 60 overs. Oh, what a...
not a good shot with all the time in the world. Just hooked in casually for four. This is vintage David Hooks. Having got over the wobbles early on, where he was hit uh, a couple of times by Michael Holding. He's really coming into his own now. We'll have a look at this. The ball short, and David Hooks simply rolling around there on his back foot, <coughs> smashing that away to square leg for four. Well, Clive Lloyd now is beginning to make a few changes out there in the field. He's got a man back just behind square, as well as a fine leg. little flirtation with that one very close yes this was a good delivery a bit of an angle across the left hander there and uh, hooks moving back just a little trying to run it down to third man he didn't succeed in getting back to ball and it was just a little lucky I'm uh, really tucking him up that's the one by. Oh, that's four. That's through, no doubt at all. Well, at the moment, this game is uh, slipping away very rapidly from the holders of the Prudential World Cup. And, of course, it's such a vital match, both of them, both of these teams having started with a defeat. Yallop uh, picks up four runs there, really fastened onto that. Splendid eye and splendid timing, it made to look so easy. He's just picked that ball on the leg stuck very well. I think that's probably the third four he's hit in that direction now. And um, he hit that one down to the boundary, despite the fact that Clive Lloyd has got two men placed in that area. So. Not only did he time it well, but he also placed it very well. Yallop throwing the bat. And leaving the fielder with too much to do. Desmond Haynes out there. The runs are rattling up for Australia now. 106 for two. Yallop on 23. Well, certainly trying to hit that one over the infield. I don't think he quite middled it, but uh, the end result from Yallop's point of view was a good one. It went straight into the gap at third man. Four. Oh. Well, Yallop has been transformed here. After a rather diffident start against the short pitch delivery, he's looking brimful of confidence now. swept away into the air and he's gone oh he's dropped it my goodness Andy Roberts doesn't often do that well what will Clive Lloyd think about that because uh, the West Indies attack has been put under a lot of pressure here Larry Gomes was the bowler and swept high and deep and really perhaps two or three strides to his right and around about chest height and popping out just as fast as it popped in. Well, it can happen to anybody. But there he is, making a little gesture. Can't feel very pleased about that. Australia racing away, 114 for two, only 20 overs bowled. More than well up with the clock. Winston Davis. It's in the air, it's over the wicket keeper's head, Holding is underneath it in front of us, and that's a nicely judged running catch by Michael Holding. Well, the West Indies will be very relieved, badly needing a wicket. Well, I think the fact that they're all trusted around Michael Holding, patting him on the back, suggests that they were beginning to get just a little bit worried. And attempted to pull shot there, top edge, straight over the top of the wicket keeper's head. And have a look at this for a catch. Holding a magnificent athlete, 
taking this right at the end, right down by his toes. He slightly misjudged it and had to spec forward right at the end. But uh, what a lovely catch. And so that's the end of the uh, third innings played by Brian Geller. He certainly was very positive out there and played some magnificent shots. Caught by holding off the bowling of Davis for 29. So the Australian uh, target, they started uh, needing 4.23 and over, chasing a target of 253, so it's 137 more runs they need to win, and it's come down to exactly three and a half. And a big shout, and he's given out by David Constant, and that's a wicket, a very important wicket for the West Indies. And it's another victim for Davis, his third. What a good wicket to get. Yes, this is beautiful bowling by Davis. He certainly got the length right, and also getting some movement off the pitch, and there really wasn't much that David Hooks could do about that. The edge there, which uh, went through to the keeper, only just carried. And that was the end of a very useful knock by him. Look at the movement of the pitch. Yes, that would have taxed uh, the very best of players. A very nasty delivery to face. So it's four down for 116. And David Hooks out for a very entertaining 45. That's a weak stroke, safely caught by Desmond Haynes. Winston Davis has struck again. McClay playing just a half little shot there. Started off to be an attempted pull or hook and never looked like getting it away from the infield. And Australia now in desperate trouble at 126 for five and Graham Wood unable to bat. Winston Davis proving a match winner here this afternoon, coming in only because of injuries to Joel Garner and Marshall, but he's really kept coming down the, down the hill at Headingley, getting a lot of pace and he's bowled pretty straight. So here he comes, bowls quite close to the stumps, so it's good bowling, ball Bounces a little higher than McClay thought it would, and he just top edges it nicely here. Greenwich and now Australia, who've looked like winning from time to time in the last hour, and yet all the time they seemed somehow fragile, and uh, they seemed the likely favourites, but one felt all the time somehow that they'd give it away, and this is what they seem to have done. Way. Rodney Marsh was telling me the other day that he was back in the runs after a, a lean spell that went on for what three or four years. He was he'd become consistent again. He'd uh, and whatever way he's doing it, and it looks a bit odd with a. Funny new back lift, confidence is always important. I suppose the students of back lifts uh, might uh, look at him and think it's uh, a copy of Kepler Vessels, but Alan Knott comes into it somewhere, I think. It's 129 for five. Five wickets, Australia, 253 needed in all. Safely away, that'll run down the boundary. That's uh, quite a distinct slope at the bottom right-hand side of the ground as we look at it. And Rodney Marsh clipped it very firmly away over the infield.
I think he's going to find that very painful indeed. Struck him in what is laughingly known as the groin. And that's got to be out. Top edge. West Indies have broken through now. 137 for six. Marsh goes. And uh, this all seems so unnecessary because there are a great number of overs still to be bowled. Marsh gone. Caught by Haynes or Michael Holding. Well, I'm afraid it was the ball before that did the damage. Well, Marsh took a hell of a crack in his midriff. Yeah. And when the next yeah. one came down, he really wasn't standing up there behind it. He was trying to spoon it round to get his middle section out of the way of the, of the ball and just spooned up a second. Catch. 8 per over now and Australia well in excess of what the West Indies were the only trouble is Australia have lost 6 wickets whereas West Indies have lost only 4 and uh, the Australians have Graham Wood unable to bat behind. Lawson has gone, the seventh wicket down, and Winston Davis has now taken five wickets. Great performance from him. Australia 141 for seven. No one seems to want to stay with Alan Border, who is the last of the recognised batsmen. He's nine not out at the moment and could finish up a dozen or so not out. Australia's door. I think the West Indies are showing a bit of their power here today. They've brought in a substitute bowler, two main bowlers, Marshall and Garner, injured, and here he is turning on another great performance. So they have strength and depth, and that's what's going to make them hard to beat. Now there are two men way down that area, looking to save four. One at an orthodox third man, the other almost at uh, Line through second slip. 
good shot by Bordeaux. Holding going for the York around about leg stump. And uh, the ball turned out to be a full toss. Yes, well, he's standing away, he's walking away to leg and giving himself room to hit, but it's a very dangerous position to get into, physically dangerous against somebody like Holding, because if, if he follows you, he sees you move and then starts to bowl at you, you're in absolutely no position to avoid the ball. Anyway, he's gone round. That's gone away down to third man for four. A little bit frustrating for holding, but it's excellent tactics from Alan Border, who's been stranded there as uh, the last of the batting lineup by the sudden fall of wickets. He's on 17 now. Steeply as it went through to wicket keeper Jeff Dushaw. Probably out of the bowler's footmark, so I think it went right underneath the bat. Yes, little puff in the bowler's footmark and jumped right over the wicket keeper's head. Top score of 45 for David Hooks, 29 to Yallop, 18 Hughes. safe pair of hands well, almost safe pair of hands the wind really is swirling around out there but uh, I think uh, Groover might just have misjudged it a fraction as well I think he was complaining that it went in the sun it certainly would be the right angle for it to go in the sun Davis 17. Davis has six wickets now. Australia in an impossible position. And we're only now into the 31st over. 21 overs still to go. That will be one of the most remarkable defeats of limited over history. That's Clive Lloyd, and there is the moment when it got into the sun. Dorver suddenly had to make a frantic grab at it. 150 for eight now. Wood injured and will not bat. And the last man in is Dennis Lilly. Australia have absolutely slaughtered the West Indies on uh, run rate. They've made 150 for seven from 30 overs. The West Indies made only 105 from 30 overs. But West Indies have one little advantage. They're going to pick up four points from the match. That's it. Davis, another wicket. Seven wickets for Winston Davis. Not too much doubt he'll be man of the match here. He's come in in place of Malcolm Marshall and bowled quite brilliantly in attacking fashion. And Australia are all out for 151. West Indies have won the match by 101 runs with, well, almost 30 overs to spare. And now what about Pakistan? Well, we've got...